بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I pray that everybody is in best of health and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everybody best of health may everybody be safe and in peace and in shukr and zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today I am super excited to have one of my favorite uh, Muslim authors uh, she is a dear dear sister uh, somebody that I look up to mashallah sabarakallah uh, it has been a blessing since I've known her Alhamdulillah. And it was also in Ramadan that I came to know her like two years ago. This was COVID time. So Smart Teenage Muslima is her latest book. Sister Farad Amin's latest book. Before that, she has had four more books, three or four, mashallah. And um, you and in the description box, you have her website. You have the link to where you can find the book, where you can get the book. Sister Farad, how are you doing? Assalamu alaikum. Oh, alaikum assalam. Jazakallah khair for having me on. It's always so lovely speaking to you. Always, mashallah. Jazakallah khair for you to, mashallah, come to the Parenting Tribe platform and speak about your book. It's an honor, mashallah, tabarakallah. So a little bit about the book. I'll just read the introduction so that everybody who's joining in, they have an idea what the book is about. And then I'll start asking you questions. Good? Yeah, that's, that's okay. fine. So Smart Teenage Muslima is a thought-provoking guide for Muslim girls. In this book, you will discover guidance from our sacred texts, like it comes from the Quran and the Sunnah, to achieve peace of mind, understand the purpose of your life, learn what Islam has to say about puberty and sex, and get the facts about LGBTQIA+, feminism and gender identity. So if you're a smart teenage Muslima whose goal is to Succeed in this life and attain Jannah in the next. This book is for you. Moms, teachers, mentors, khalas, pupos, aunts, uncles, brothers, dads, anybody who has a smart teenage Muslima in the house, in the community, in the school, in the classroom, like for youth mentors like myself, in the massages, in our programs, then this book is something that should be a course book. This book should be something that should be a discussion uh, at the table. This book should be something that you talk over tea. This book should be a book club book, right? This is that kind of a book, alhamdulillah. And we are so blessed to have Sister Farhad with us who wrote this book. So Sister Farhad, I asked this question before and I'm going to ask again, why Smart Teenage Muslima? Why did you write it? Well, I, I think what you've said about it's a book that parents need, um, I think that was probably is one this there's two reasons but this is the second one why um parents they just are not aware of what's going on and they don't know how to deal with the issues that their daughters are facing so and i think one of the main reasons is that when they were growing up where if that was in the west or even to be honest it could be anywhere in the world nowadays yes, because yes. uh these idea these issues are, are global now they didn't have to face them so uh, for example you know, pornography was not so rife and easily available. You know, the internet wasn't there. Um, the idea of uh, their girls being sexually harassed, whether that's at school or college or even on the streets, that's something that they didn't face. And also with the issue of discussing puberty and Islamic sex education, they weren't issues that were talked about because there wasn't a need. It's because society was not as sexualized as it is now. Absolutely. Now, when their girls are, are growing up, they're facing these um, problems and they don't know how to deal with it. And so therefore, it is a manual for parents that I would say parents should read this book first and then give it to their daughters because then yes. they yes. can educate themselves or, or they may decide, you know, I'm going to read this. So I'm going to read the chapters on um, puberty and then I will decide which parts I'm going to talk to my daughter at age appropriately in the same way. Like in our communities, we haven't historically spoken about sex education from an Islamic perspective. But the problem we have now is that um, whether it's in the cartoons or the books they're teaching them at school, you know, as we know, SRV, you know, in England it's called sex and relationship education. That is starting at a very young age now. And we have to be prepared, you know, in the same way we teach our kids about healthy eating because we don't want them to become, you know, get ill, you know, become obese or or just have eating disorders. In the, in the same way, we have to view um, Islamic sex education in the same way. It's not that we, if you teach them about this from an Islamic point of view, it won't make them want to then experiment. Sometimes, Sorry, okay. <laughs> sometimes parents think if I 
talk about this, my child will then go and experiment or want to go and get a boyfriend or want to go and do these things. But the problem you have is that they're learning about this anyway, you yes. know, and so whether it's from Netflix or Disney Channel or the, you know, the SRE teachers at school. And so isn't it better to give them a fact from Islam and you're in charge of how they first hear about it, you know, and even we need to check, protect our children from sex abuse, sexual abuse. It's so common now, whether, and it's not just a stranger that who, you know, uh, coming in and doing this to your child or something happening on the street. Unfortunately, in our communities, you know, this happens in all communities, by the way. Yes, it does. In communities, in even in Islamic religious settings, um, when you go abroad or at home, when relatives who are not that your children's mehram, and even unfortunately mehram, mehrams, it happens. And if so, we need to tell our children what is acceptable and what isn't. And they also need to know that they can come and talk to us about these things, that they're not going to get shouted at or not going to get told off. Because um, in the past, that's exactly what would happen. I still think it does happen. And children are getting, you know, when I was doing the research, it was quite hard doing the research for um, this book because so much was not good news, whether it's, and, and so I'm not um, catastrophizing and I'm not, oh, I'm not like just making this problem bigger than it is so that you will buy my book. That That's definitely not. <laughs> no, I, of course, Sister Farad, you don't even have to say that. Everybody, so so in your parenting tribe, we address everything openly. This is the open space. And what you've addressed in the book, it has been addressed and it is an open discussion for all the mothers over and over and over again. And you're so on point that mm -hmm. a lot of this is not in a book format the, the because so why is this book so powerful? So from from a reader's perspective, I'm telling the audience right now. I know because you just said I'm not I'm not promoting my book. So I just want to say if she does not, then she's not doing service to 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 what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose her to do. So let me promote her book, inshallah Taala. And and the thing is, uh, this book talks about connecting with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, knowing why Allah does what Allah does, knowing what Quran is, why Quran is, how how do we understand and receive Quran? Because the one of the one of the biggest issues that parents and the mothers talk about is, oh, my daughter said that, but, but why did Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that? But he was a man. How come he can say that? But how come men don't have that and women don't have that? And you discuss so much of it. You, you'd like, like, uh, on the, like on the, you know, what is it called? You hammered it on the head of the nail, each and every point that women, that mothers, that fathers, uh, have problem discussing with their kids in open conversations. You you do that in the book. You talk about pornography. You talk about sex. You talk about the biological changes. You talk about uh, um, yani fashion. You talk about the LGBTQ. One of the things was like, because like everything is so cool and we are so acceptable, the girl is changing in the changing room. And while she was changing, two men come in and yani peek in. I mean, that is a horrendous. I cannot even imagine like my sending my daughter to a mall and thinking she's safe, she's with her friends, and something like this happens. And we've had cases where men claiming to be transgender have raped young girls. And and and, and we know what kind of a, yani, again, it's not catastrophizing at all. Every single one of us, if we don't want to listen, and if we don't, if you're not searching for our solutions, then that's that's upon us. That's, uh, and Jazakallah khair for this huge service that you've done through this book. Please continue. <laughs> Oh no, Jazakallah Khair for that. It's, yeah, so it's, so so what I wanted, what part of the research I did prior to reading, uh, to writing the book was I ordered five of the top teen guidebooks for girls from Amazon. Right. And I read them. Right. Because I thought if a parent, you know, because any parent will go on Amazon, they, you know, they don't know how to help their daughter. She's going through changes, you know, maybe she's losing her confidence and they're going to go and buy one of these books. And, um some of them did have good advice so i'm not going to say they were complete nonsense you know like there was some good advice on how grooming being aware of grooming or aware of um that you know consent you don't have to be forced into doing things you don't want to right like how to use social media in a healthy manner but mm -hmm. the things that were the topics that were very problematic for muslims mm -hmm. was the issues relating to one how they view parents and mm -hmm. It was like the parents, oh, they are just there and you can listen to them if you want to. If you don't want to listen to them, you don't have to. You choose your own path. And I thought, 
Well, if a Muslim girl read that, you well, one, it makes total sense why non-Muslim girl pe- pe- teenagers disrespect their parents because no one's telling them to respect their parents. No one's telling them to listen. Um, you know, no one's telling them to, you know, the idea of obeying, well, that's just off the table completely. But it's like, oh, they're just another group of people who, you know, they've got an opinion, um, but you need to forge your own path. You need to listen to ideas and choose the one that's best for you. So that was one thing, no respect for parents. Then secondly, the idea that um, you can, you should be sexually free to choose what, you know, do what feels good do what makes you happy as long as you are not harming anyone as long as there is consent you know as long as you love the person which again this idea of as if as if a 12 year old or 13 year old you know growing up in the west knows what love is you just think it's actually it's you're you're telling a girl that her lust you know her her feelings if she likes a guy she should then or girl because and that was the other thing being um uh, a single sex relationship is fine, uh, you know, or you're basically being bi, being uh, whichever of those letters you want pan. to be. Pan is also something. Yes, pan. It, you know, that that is it. You you can be sexually whoever, and also it's like experiment. Even though legally there are ages for this, that doesn't. That's you know they'll mention that, but then you can experiment as long as there's consent, and. And what they don't discuss is, well, okay, how does that work out in real life? Um, and what, you know, what happens is, okay, you, they will go through this cycle of they like one guy, then, and it's not a committed relationship, any because there's no there's no contract, there's no rules. You, it's your feelings. When you're no longer happy, you move on to the next person. Now, what toll does that take on a girl's mental health? You know, how does how does she feel about herself when she's dumped or is dumping people numerous times? Um, and she thinks, that doesn't sound happy or like love to me. Yeah, it's a mental disease. And it's a, and you talk about feminism in the book and from a historical perspective with times and what each wave of feminism brought in and why they, what was the need of that? What was the agenda behind it? And what does feminism truly mean? And, 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 it's 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 a, such an important chapter, and you were saying earlier as well that when people hear feminism, they either get very offended, oh, she's going to say something bad against it, or they're like, hmm, so she's a feminist, so I don't want to hear her. So they, they don't give enough chance because this is such a hot topic, the LGBTQ topic and the feminism topic amongst our girls is such a hot topic that nobody wants to touch it. And the minute a parent starts to touch it, the, the child is already like with all of their offenses up, like, I know you're not going to agree with most of it. But listen, I I really want you to educate yourself about the history of it, about the ideas from where it's coming, about the agenda that it is about, and then decide for yourself. Decide for yourself. Because at the end of the day, yes, our kids are going to do what they're going to do, but we cannot be absolved from the responsibility of of giving them information that is factual, Mm. that is grounded in faith, sunnah, and science because again even if if somebody googles and searches about how love and lust are different and what they do to the brain and what actually having one sexual partner what does that do to our brain and our body and if we get into this idea that we can have multiple sexual partners then what's that doing to a woman like Mm -hmm. literally there's a sign there there are ivy league universities that have given papers upon papers of research which with with uh, confirmed science that how bad that is for for both humans for men and women and what will happen to their relationships and etc etc oh so much to talk about anybody mm-hmm. if you have any questions for uh, for our sister farah like the author of this amazing book and her other book is also available i mean there are four other books but Michelle, the, the one before this was also fantastic smart single muslim and then smart teenage muslim so if i would ask you why should I actually just told why should you buy this book? So I shouldn't ask, I shouldn't put Sister Farad on the spot. Sister Farad, what do you, what do you, what has your response been about this book? It has been in the market for a month now? Yes, yes, it's been a month. And Alhamdulillah, I, it has been, an, um, it, it's been very good. It's been very positive from parents, um, mostly because although the book is for the 
girl to read. It's, you know, written in for her to read. It's not a parenting book. But what I have, um, the messages that, I, that I've received from parents is that they, uh, one parent said to me, it's like you've been a fly on the wall in my house and yeah. all the questions and all the problems and issues I'm trying to like um, firefight with my daughter, you're yeah. helping me. You've just given me like this um, <laughs> ammunition to now, I now know how to talk about these things because uh, the thing is that you can, you know, as a, being a parent is, as we know, is, is so hard and it's just, you know, alhamdulillah, we, we do it because we, like put that in us that we want children and we have so much uh like hope and expectations and then what's happening is that society is making it hard for us it's you know we just want to teach our children our islam we want to teach them that allah made adam alayhi islam and hawa and you you know they you have man and woman and they have children and you have a family and now then our children are being told the opposite and they're being told that oh no your religion what your parents have taught you is wrong and it's backward and you need to just discard it. And parents, you know, alhamdulillah, parents who are working, they don't have time to read lots of books and find out arguments and how to do Because in the schools, the, you know, it's it's really actually really bad how anti-Islam, I'm thinking of the UK in particular, it, you know, what they're teaching our kids, it's not just science and maths anymore. Back in no, old, you know, the old days, maybe it was. Doctrinating them with mm -hmm. I ideologies and like shoving it down. It's a mess here in the United States too, especially the trans movement and mm -hmm. how they're putting it in the courses and in the books and 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 uh, and and the children at any at, at an age if they feel that they are trans in their mind they can mm. just sign a paper and their parents don't need to be there and they can have uh, they can start getting uh treatment for that mm. it's bad it, it is bad it is really yeah. bad. And, and this is it and i and, and i thought if there's one book if i can write something that will help parents be able to persuade their children that as you know that way of life you know you know a secular way of life a godless life you know a, mm -hmm. um, a very individualistic way of life mm -hmm. this very liberal way of thinking that first of all like if we just look at our teenagers in the west are they happy and no. the answer is exactly mm -hmm. they are the most miserable when surveys have been done and i put the stats in the book whether it's yes. from pew research or other ones yes. they, yes. they are Children in, in, you know, so-called third world um, and, and in the East, they are happier. They are more content. Yes. Whereas um, in the West, they are more, the, the levels of suicide are higher. The levels of low self-esteem, you know, the, they, that they engage in, you know, the number of STDs that they have and engaging in sex, risky sexual behavior, the amount of drug addiction. And you think that tells you something, that they're, the idea is, that their way of life is based on are not correct and Absolutely. you know and therefore that's the discussion um that we need to have with our kids and, and i think the issue that we face is at school when they present that very liberal way of thinking it's it's done in such a nice like we're your friends and it's so calm and so um you know, it's done very nice. The packaging nice. is beautiful. The message, I mean, the ingredient yeah. is rotten, but the packaging is beautiful. Yes, exactly. And it's, it, you know, it's similar to feminism, like that feminism is all about women's rights, where as it's it's so much more than that. And and the thing is that as parents, when we're talking to our children, we have to change the style that we explain Islam to them. We The idea of just being very strict, you know, it's my way or the highway, Yes. That's not going to cut it anymore, and we have to adapt. It is hard, but Alhamdulillah, the reward you'll get for doing that will be immense. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah, Khair, Sister Farad. Thank you so much for your time, Mashallah, Tabarakallah. And anybody, if anybody had a question, please you can chime in the question in the description box. We've given the links to Sister Farad's website as well as where you can buy the book. And mashallah, tabarakallah. Do connect with her on her Instagram. Um, it's uh, Farad Amin. And uh, do get in touch with her. Ask her questions or just let her know. The review of the book, please review. Uh, the Please, if you get the book, please leave a review on Amazon as well. I mean, I know that's 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 crucial. That's important, right, Sister Farad? Yeah, 
Yes, yeah, that, because that's how other parents will find out about it. And one of the things we do need to be aware of is that, you know, when it comes to, um, um, you know, the messaging that our girls get, thousands of dollars are spent to change our girls' way of thinking. If we just think of the shows, you know, that are created, when you have a Muslim female character, especially a young one, so, uh, you know, the, the example of Elite, where it's a Netflix show and the Muslim girl, she takes off her hijab and she sleeps with a non-Muslim guy. Again, Hala, by which was on Apple TV. Again, that same thing, you know, very boring, repetitive message, but they keep giving, that's the message they will keep giving to our girls. So we, you know, I I hope, you know, through, through this book, it's a way to kind of break through that message and reviews will help because it will push it up and um, up the up the chart, and then more parents can will find it, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Uh, please do share this YouTube uh, link as well, where Sister uh, Fred is uh, talking uh, about the book and about why it is important and what it does for the Muslim household, the parent-child relationship as well. Um, I have two teenage daughters, and uh, mashallah tabarakallah, I made them read this. I made them. So listen to this. I made them read this. It's not like, oh, they said, oh, wow, wonderful. Yeah, we are, the, all of these are very <laughs> icky topics to discuss. We yes. want to read it. But no, you make it into a group discussion. Um, I have a youth group at the masjid, inshallah sa'ala. This will be a course that I will be teaching to them. We will be doing a book club kind of a thing and then discussion kind of a thing. Because I think, inshallah sa'ala, the identity of a Muslim young teenage girl needs to be grounded in faith which sister for does from the first chapter onwards and then it carries you through the questions because if you do not know why then everything else just like fades away um so sister adila hussein um uh, and sister sabia um they are saying well done sister i'm breaking the taboos and they're saying i will get this book inshallah jazakallah khair for everybody for your time take care assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu sister adila says jazakallah khair for your advice sister Fred, everybody assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam